we have a circle with a diameter of one inch, 950 thousandths. And we're gonna extrude that circle 750 thousandths uh, thick, which is three quarters of an inch. Moving on to sheet number two, it appears like we have six holes that are gonna be tapped for 1032 threads with a classification of 2B fit. These holes are gonna be 375 thousandths minimum depth. And these holes are also going to locate themselves on a one inch, 626 thousandths bolt hole circle. Let's move on to sheet number three. Sheet number three is indicating that there is a circular pocket that resides centered to our part. And along with that is we have like a overing groove that goes around the perimeter of that pocket. And that O-ring groove is, has a depth of 63 thousandths of an inch. So let's make our way over to Fusion 360 and let's 3D model this part. All right, looking at sheet number one of our blueprint, we're breaking this, this complex part down to some basic shapes. We're gonna go C on the keyboard. C on the keyboard is our shortcut for circle. We're gonna look at our triad over here. And again, these squares represent the planes of our view cube. For example, the bottom plane here is actually the top of our part. This plane here is the front of our part. And this plane right here is the right of our part. And we can orient that up here using our view cube. Well, I'm gonna start this particular drawing off the top. So if I click on the top, button here of my view cube, it will only show me the top plane. Okay, so I'm going to click on the top view. And we're going to anchor our circle to the center of our origin here. So we're going to left click on the origin and drag out our circle. This particular circle has a dimension of one inch 950 thousandths, and then press enter. We're going to right click, go to press and pull and we are gonna extrude that circle to 750 thousandths of an inch. Oops. For some reason, stop working. So now we have a cylinder um, that it has a diameter of one inch, 950 thousandths, and a thickness of three quarters of an inch, or 750 thousandths. Let's move on to sheet number two. Sheet number two, we're gonna lay out our bolt hole circle. Very first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna create another circle. And this circle, we're gonna create the sketch on top of the part. So we're gonna go C on the keyboard. Be mindful that you are not clicking back on your uh, triad in these planes over here, you're gonna be clicking on the top of the part. Just like before, we're gonna anchor our sketch right off of the origin. We're gonna drag our sketch out here, and we're gonna type in the diameter of our bolt hole circle. So one inch, 626 thousandths, and enter. We only want this bolt hole circle to be here as a reference, so we're gonna change this to a construction circle. We're gonna click on the circle itself and press X on the keyboard, or you can always go up to your, your sketch palette and change it to a construction circle. It does the same thing. Next thing that we're gonna do is we want to orient our very first uh, bolt hole circle up here at the very top of our part. So I'm gonna add in a construction line going right from the center location. And I'm gonna snap it to the construction circle just like this. Notice that Fusion 360 automatically entered in this vertical constraint. If yours does not have that, you can add that in after the fact by going up to constraints and down to vertical constraint. This is essential to get your location of your first hole right at the very top of the part. 
Just like we did before, we're going to change that line to a construction line. We're going to press click on the line and press X on the keyboard. Well, we have our location of that one bolt hole here. So notice that every line consists of two endpoints. Well, we're using that one endpoint um, to reference off of the bolt hole circle. Well, we're going to replicate that one point six times around that bolt hole circle. We're going to go to create and down to circular pattern. The object that we want to pattern is just that one endpoint. So we're going to click on the endpoint there. Make sure you're not clicking on the line and you're not clicking on the circle. We're just clicking on the endpoint. In our pop-up window over here, we're going to select the center point and go down to our origin. We're going to change the quantity or the amount of instances that our bolt hole circle has to six and then press OK. So now we have six points that are all equally spaced. Now what we're going to do is we're going to stop our sketch upper right hand corner and we're going to change those points into tapped holes. We're going to go to create and down to hole. In our pop-up window here, it's asking which points do you want to select? Well, you're going to go over and you are going to select all six points. Now that we've selected all these six points, we're going to fill out some information in our pop-up window. Our hold tap type, or excuse me, our hold type, this is going to be a chamfered or a countersunk hole. The hole tap type, it is tapped for threads because we see that um, with the designation of 10-32 UNF, UNF. The thread offset, we are going to go full threads and we are using a drill to actually drill the, uh, the hole first. We're not using an end mill. And then underneath here, we, we have the uh, pictogram of what the hole is going to look like. We're just going to fill out these values. The depth of our threads, according to the print, are 375 thousandths. The chamfer or the countersink diameter is 205 thousandths. The included angle of our countersink is actually going to be 90 degrees. Make sure you change that from 82 to 90. The size of our, our hole is going to be pound number 10 or number 10 screw. The designation is 1032. 32 indicates that there are 32 threads per inch. Our classifications of threads are 2B. And then these are going to be right-handed threads. And as I mentioned in other videos, if you check this box, this will actually give you a helical feature that you can 3D print. Otherwise, if it's unchecked, this will give you like an image or a picture of threads. For this example, we're going to leave it unchecked and then press OK. If you zoom in here, notice that you have six holes that have this image of threads in there and the outside of our holes have that 205,000 chamfer there. Moving on to sheet number three of our blueprint, we're going to add in that circular pocket and then we're also going to add in in the same sketch the geometry uh, needed to make that o-ring groove. O -ring groove. We're going to do this by going C on the keyboard Again, we're clicking on the top of the part. Make sure you're not clicking on that those triad planes there. We're going to reference off of the origin so everything remains concentric. We're going to drag our mouse out. The diameter of our pocket is 1 inch, 1 inch, 125 thousandths, and then press enter. C on the keyboard again. We're going to drag it out again. The diameter of the inside of our groove is one inch, 180 thousandths. 
C again on the keyboard, drag it out. The outside diameter of our groove is 1 inch 320 thousandths, and enter again. We're going to finish our sketch. We're going to right click, press and pull. This will allow us to extrude our geometry. First geometry that we're going to look at is our pocket. We're going to click on that. The depth of our pocket according to the print is 500 thousandths deep. To change the direction of the pocket, we need to put in the minus symbol. So we're gonna put minus 0.500, and that will actually subtract material down. Notice our operation over here in our pop-up window is cut, and then press okay or enter on the keyboard. Notice as soon as we uh, hit enter on the keyboard is our sketch geometry disappeared. In our browser window, if we open up our sketches, we're going to go to our last sketch and turn the visibility of sketch number three on. I'm going to right click, press and pull. This time I'm going to choose the geometry that makes up that O-ring groove. I'm going to click on it and I'm going to type in the, the depth of that O-ring groove at negative 63 thousandths and then press enter. After I'm done with that, I can turn off the visibility of that sketch. And we're pretty much done with this part. The only thing that uh, we are missing, if you look in the notes field, it says, unless otherwise specified, remove all burrs and break edges 10 thousandths. So we need to add in some chamfers here. Imagine you're holding this part with your in your hands and all these edges that are machined are gonna be like razor blades. So we're actually going to break those edges using a chamfering tool and we're going to model that right now in our workspace. Since we're dealing with a three dimensional solid body, we're going to go to modify and down to chamfer. We're going to zoom in here and we're going to click on all the geometry that could be potentially sharp. So we're talking the inside edge of our pocket, the inside edge of our o-ring groove, the outside edge of our o-ring groove, the outside of our part, and then also the bottom of our part. We're going to type in ten thousandths of an inch and enter. This is a good opportunity. Double check your part. Make sure it meets all the specifications as laid out on your blueprint. And this concludes how to make the Titan 3M.